Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shai, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In this episode, I'll be going over the highly requested 2001 Japanese horror film, Pulse, also known as Cairo. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film while breaking down each scare scene and rating them on how scary they are or attempt to be. Pulse tells the story of a deadly curse that deletes people who access a mysterious website on the internet. Sounds like something I'd want to protect myself from. Thankfully, our sponsor NordVPN has just the solution. My friends, it's no secret that we are extremely vulnerable every time we access the internet. There are a bunch of bad individuals looking to steal your data and personal information each time you access the web. NordVPN significantly enhances your online security and privacy by encrypting your online traffic, hiding your information from third parties, and even your own service provider. With NordVPN, you can browse the internet from your desktop or phone with the peace of mind that your information is being protected at all times, which is very important. Best of all, especially for movie lovers like me, NordVPN allows you to access region-restricted content, meaning you'll be able to stream your favorite movies and TV shows that you normally would not be able to from your own region. I'm always looking for foreign movies to cover on the channel that aren't available in the US, and this is a lifesaver. Click the link in the description down below or go to nordvpn.com slash horrormine to get a huge discount off a two-year plan plus four additional months absolutely free. Try NordVPN risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash horrormine and the link can also be found in the description and comment section down below. Pulse is a very cryptic movie that contains people turning into black stains, crazy-looking dancing ghosts, and that one scene that terrified everyone. But how scary is it? Sit back and relax and join me as we explore Pulse and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins with a narration from our main character, Michi, telling us that it all began without warning. We get a cryptic shot of a computer room as the phone rings in the background. The person calling is Michi's friend, Junko, trying to contact their coworker Taguchi, who hasn't shown up to work in over a week. Taguchi has been working on a disc, and Junko feels something is terribly wrong. Their other coworker, Yabe, says that they need to get the disc now. Michi goes to check on Taguchi, and this shot of her riding the bus is an early indicator of one of the movie's themes of loneliness. As she looks for Taguchi's apartment, we see a door surrounded by red tape, which is an easily missed but crucial element in the film. She goes into his apartment and speaks with Taguchi, not realizing that she's speaking to a ghost. He seems normal when talking to her, which makes it more disturbing when she discovers his body cosplaying as a decoration hanging on the wall. The previous conversation becomes more disturbing when we realize that he nonchalantly grabbed the cord while speaking with her. It's a decent scare scene and an interesting way to introduce this movie's curse. She regroups with Junko and Yabe and gives him the disc that Taguchi was working on. They wonder why Taguchi did what he did as he never showed any signs of being depressed. Yabe thinks that maybe he just wanted to move on and says that he himself feels like that sometimes. They don't really have any reaction to what he just said, which is odd considering what just happened. They look at Taguchi's disc, which shows a couple of weird things. Taguchi is standing in the corner and his face is hidden in the darkness. One of the screens is showing the exact same picture and the screen in that picture is also. The screen right next to him appears to eerily show his reflection. I wouldn't really consider this a scare scene, but it does show the type of scares this film provides. Strange and unsettling images that are difficult to comprehend and process. Michi watches a news report about a message in a bottle that was discovered 10 years after it was sent by a man named Hikono Koichi. We don't see the message he wrote, and I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the overall plot, though it did get me thinking about how time flies and what I would say to myself 10 years from now. Has dad come back yet? Question mark. The TV starts to malfunction and the news reporter's face becomes distorted. 
She quickly turns off the TV because she agrees that that was some creepy shit. A glass bottle falls on its own behind her and she realizes that something is terribly wrong. I like that the film is slowly showing us that something weird is happening but never really elaborates on what it is exactly. There is a dreadful feeling that is felt throughout the entire film that gradually gets worse. It's never fully explained and that's probably one of the scariest things about it. We meet our next character, a college student named Kawashima. The film switches back and forth from his and Michi's perspectives while both try to figure out the strange events unfolding. Kawashima accesses the internet for the first time and clicks agree on a user agreement without actually reading it. He gets an error message on screen and gets taken to a mysterious website. We see the grainy video of a man standing alone in a room. He goes through numerous videos of people alone in their rooms acting strange. The website then eerily asks, would you like to meet a ghost? He wises up and quickly turns off the computer, tossing his mouse and keyboard in the process. Kawashima's first time on the internet was disappointing for him, but gives us our first actual look into how this curse works. This mysterious curse somehow deletes people who access the internet and stumble upon the deadly website. The computer turns on on its own and goes back to the website. We see the disturbing image of a man sitting in a strange room with a plastic bag over his head. The words help me are written all over the wall behind him. He goes to a computer lab and seeks help from a woman named Harue. I instantly recognize recognize actress Koyuki from her role in The Last Samurai, where she wouldn't stop giving Tom Cruise some sake. She writes down some instructions for him and it's obvious that they've taken a liking to one another. I kinda wish that was me. And so does this guy. Michi's mom comes over and asks if she's been in contact with her dad. These videos are getting harder and harder for me to make. Yabe gets a call on his cell phone where a strange voice says help me over and over again. He then looks at his cell phone and sees the picture of Taguchi. The voice is super creepy and hearing it say help me kind of got under my skin. He takes the bus to Taguchi's apartment and just like Michi earlier is the only one on it. While he looks through the apartment, a woman is singing this very creepy song that creates a strange, otherworldly atmosphere. He finds a strange piece of paper that just says, The Forbidden Room. He turns on the light and sees a black stain on the wall where Taguchi's body used to be. He turns the lights back on and Taguchi suddenly appears as the woman singing gets louder. <laughs> I really liked this scare scene and found it to be super unnerving, mostly because of the woman singing which gave me chills, however, this scare scene pales in comparison to the one that immediately follows. Yabe finds the red door from earlier and thinks it's a good idea to go inside. He finds a strange basement with a single couch and a wall covered by red tape. He turns around and sees a ghostly woman eerily standing behind him. She moves her arms in a weirdly robotic way and starts walking towards him. He looks absolutely terrified as the woman continues to weirdly approach him. He falls back behind the couch and doesn't see the woman's feet underneath. Well, that's because she's already on the couch ready to scare the absolute crap out of him and me. This is the scene that had most people who've seen this movie talking, and for good reason. It's a different kind of scary that's a little hard to put into words. Everything about this scene was so odd and unnerving. From the moment Yabe discovered the strange room and the music started blaring, I knew this was going to be a terrifying scene. Perhaps the most unsettling thing about this scene is seeing the woman creepily standing behind him in the dark. Her pose is just so odd and the way her hands are straightened out like that makes her almost seem like a mannequin. And don't get me started on that super weird walk. It took me a second to actually process what I was seeing. The way her head slowly pops out from the couch as the music gets louder was just horror brilliance. I think the strangest thing about this whole scene is that she just looks like a normal person. She doesn't look sinister or like a typical horror movie ghost. She just looks like a normal woman with a completely blank expression on her face which is oddly terrifying to look at. Yabe comes back to the office and isn't quite the same after what just happened and who can blame him. He never visited the website and seems to have become cursed by stepping into the forbidden room. Sometime later, Michi watches a woman frantically placing tape around a door creating another forbidden room. Kawashima's computer turns on by itself again and shows the same video with the man in the the room. The man slowly approaches the screen in a very unsettling way. 
Just as he is about to take off the bag and reveal his face, Kawashima unplugs the computer. Another really good scare scene that isn't overly dramatic or in your face. He goes back to look for Haroe and tells her the website keeps popping up. It sort of acts like an unwanted computer virus or pop-up ad. I used to get those on my computer quite frequently back in high school. He sees a computer with a black screen and several white dots floating around. She says that it's a miniature model of the world. If the dots get too close together, they die, but if they get too far apart, they're drawn together. I'm not exactly sure of its meaning, but here's what I think it means. It's possibly meant to represent people's desire not to be alone, but their inability to truly let anyone get close, just like Uncle Chael, resulting in people always being alone. As we'll come to see, this is reflected in Haruo's behavior towards Kawashima. <laughs> She goes to his apartment to get the data from the mysterious website. She also describes the internet pretty much perfectly. Everyone uses the internet to connect with other people online, but we all just live our own separate lives. Just like the white dots on screen, everyone seems drawn together in the same place, but we never truly connect. But this isn't the philosophical score, so let's keep going. Michi tries speaking to Yabe, but he's been ignoring her since the Forbidden Room. She asks her boss about Yabe's recent behavior, and he gets super preachy about friendship for some reason. She talks to Yabe and he tells her that he saw a horrible face in the Forbidden Room. She realizes the Forbidden Room is the one with the red tape and he tells her not to go in there. She looks at the Forbidden Room made by the woman but wisely walks away from it. She then sees the same woman climbing on top of a storage tank. The woman doesn't really like the view from up there and decides to quickly go back down without using the ladder. This makes me think that the woman stumbled upon the website and became cursed. She then created a Forbidden Room to curse someone else before her death. Taguchi did the exact same thing and created the room that Yabe went into. Kawashima is casually hanging out at the school library and I noticed something a little weird. As he walks away, there is a young woman in the background that was sitting down with her head tucked in. She then gets up and slowly walks away, kind of behaving like the cursed Yabe. The next scene of this girl slowly pushing a book cart with her head down pretty much confirms that there are cursed people that have accessed the website everywhere. He finds Haroi in the library reading a book about ghosts. They look at the white dots again and she says that similar dots started to appear but aren't the same as the others. She believes they may be related to the mysterious website. We meet one of her co-workers Yoshizaki and Kawashima walks away looking defeated, probably thinking he's her work husband. She quickly runs after him and gives him her phone number. It also has her address on it and she says he can call her anytime. She just dropped about all the hints in the world and Kawashima just stands there looking clueless. He reads the book on ghosts and notices a young boy creepily staring at him from behind a bookshelf. Yoshizaki also sees the boy and tells him to go catch him. The boy is clearly a ghost and quickly disappears. We then see a construction worker creating another forbidden room, showing that the curse is quickly spreading. A spirit can then briefly be seen moving inside the room. Yoshizaki believes that spirits are slowly starting to take over the realm of the living because their realm has become full. Kawashima doesn't believe in ghosts and just walks away. Michi and Junko start calling around because their boss hasn't shown up to work. It turns out that their boss has also become cursed and can be seen making a forbidden room. This scene is filled with dread as Junko wonders why people are starting to disappear. She runs out to look for him as Michi receives a call similar to Yabe's. She goes to find Yabe and finds him looking eerily similar to the woman he encountered. She approaches him, but he suddenly turns into a black stain on the wall. We then hear a voice saying, help me, and weirdly sounds like it's getting closer. This was a great scare scene that really highlights the film's excellent sound editing. Hearing that creepy voice alone made this scene scary. While looking for their boss, Junko stumbles upon and enters the forbidden room he made. Michi runs in after her and finds her on the floor, terrified. A ghostly woman standing in the corner of the room starts walking towards them. The ghost is oddly pulling on her hair and is seen covering her face as the two run off. The strange way the ghosts move and behave is what sets Pulse apart from other Asian horror movies. They behave so strange and unusual that it actually makes them scarier than the typical Asian horror movie ghost. The incident in the Forbidden Room has changed Junko, who is now cursed. Michi also stepped into the Forbidden Room, but doesn't seem affected. I think that's because Junko was the one who removed the tape and initially stepped inside. Michi goes to the grocery store to buy food and encounters a cursed employee staring at her from behind a window. His face becomes distorted and freaks her out, but no ghost is gonna get in the way of Michi getting her food. She runs out of the store without paying 
annoying and even triggers the alarm. Kawashima tries calling Harue, but she doesn't pick up the phone. He goes to the computer lab and finds it abandoned and a complete mess. Several chairs are rolling around on their own, but he doesn't even notice. One of the computers has the mysterious website pulled up showing the curse is now everywhere. He goes to Harue's apartment, who is now clearly cursed. She is soaking wet and says she wants to run away. She dries off in her apartment and seemingly calms down. She starts cryptically talking about death in a really depressing conversation. She then turns on several monitors that all have the cursed website on them. Kawashima tries staying positive in that he'll never believe in ghosts. He seems a little naive and almost in denial about the fact that everyone has to go someday. The conversation goes into a really weird place and I'm not sure I truly understand everything the film is trying to say. Perhaps the film is saying that people in ghosts are truly the same because they're alone while living and in death. The spot where the woman died is now a black stain and we hear her quietly asking for help. It's a scary thought to think that the people consumed by the curse turn into mere black stains that beg for help in the afterlife. Michi is now stuck taking care of Junko, who is now unable to speak. One day, Junko briefly speaks to Michi before finding a nice spot to turn into a black stain. I know this is supposed to be sad and scary, but I actually found it pretty funny. She literally had to find a good spot to turn into a stain before being consumed by the curse. Michi then freaks out and looks around the apartment for Junko like she didn't just witness her disappearing. She literally saw the exact same thing happen to Yabe earlier, but I guess she just didn't care about him as much. To make sure not even a stain can keep her company, Junko turns into a bunch of dust and completely vanishes. The sound she makes is both sad and horrifying. Michi now finds herself alone and tries calling her mom, who has already fallen victim to the curse. Kawashima hangs out in a game room to where he is the sole occupant. A cursed person walks behind him and he runs right into a ghostly shadow. The ghost starts getting down in slow-mo and he takes off running. This scene wasn't scary and it only really serves to show how bad the curse has gotten. He then randomly comes across Harue in the street breaking some pottery. She is afraid to be alone and asks him to take her somewhere far away. They commit fair evasion without blinking an eye and board a completely empty train. Harue realizes just how alone they are, but Kawashima says at least they've got each other. He's trying to stay positive in a truly crappy situation and I applaud him for it. I'd be happy too sitting on a train alone with Koyuki. Unfortunately, she's not as thrilled to be sitting next to him and takes off running as soon as the train stops. It's a truly depressing scene that really gives off the feeling of emptiness that the characters must be feeling. Back in her apartment, she browses through the website that shows there's barely anyone left. She sees the same disturbing video Kawashima saw earlier and a paper print on its own that reads the forbidden room. The man takes the bag off his head and reveals his face as the curse consumes him. Another piece of paper prints out that says construction material red tape. This confirms that those who are cursed are made to create a forbidden room before they die. She suddenly sees herself on screen and is being recorded from her bedroom. She goes into the bedroom and sees exactly what is recording her, although we don't. She then reaches out and seemingly grabs absolutely nothing. <laughs> Kawashima shows up and says that they should live together so that they'll never be alone. He skipped a couple of stages, but he's trying his best. He breaks into her apartment and finds it completely empty. He then watches a depressing news report about numerous people that have gone missing throughout the country. He wanders the empty streets and gives himself a five-finger discount on a soda since there are no witnesses. The film's storylines come together as Kawashima finds Michi sitting in her broken-down car. They quickly get along considering they're both alone and practice the same trait. Thievery. As they fix her car, we hear a fading siren in the background, one of the few signs of life left. They decide to go look for Harue and head to her apartment. He says this is the last place they'll go before trying to go as far as they can. In Harue's bedroom, he sees the words help me written all over the walls. Michi sees an abandoned factory in the distance and thinks Harue might be there. They go in and Michi warns him not to go into any door with red tape. <sighs> They find Harue inside the factory with a plastic bag over her head holding a gun. They also find red tape, which means she's made a forbidden room somewhere. She takes the bag off and deletes herself. They cover her body in a sheet and that's pretty much it. Her death scene went by pretty fast and felt a little underwhelming for how important a character she was. Kawashima seems to move on from her pretty quick and is already getting hair rubs from Michi. He realizes they're out of gas and goes back into the factory to get some. He fills up a gas can and the cap just so happens 
happens to fall and roll into the Forbidden Room. Instead of using one of the only resources he has left, his brain, he decides to go inside the Forbidden Room and grab it. <laughs> he immediately encounters a spirit who tells him that death is eternal loneliness. Kawashima is still in denial about the existence of spirits and tries grabbing a hold of it. He quickly finds out that ghosts do exist and becomes frozen in fear. The spirit slowly approaches him and goes from 120p to 1080p. This wasn't a very scary scene, especially because Kawashima has a pretty odd reaction to seeing the ghost. There's nothing particularly scary about the spirit either. Michi runs in and finds Kawashima sitting next to the black stain where Haruei passed away. They drive into the city where it looks like a full-on apocalyptic scene. Smoke is coming from several buildings and the streets are completely empty. We also see several bodies laid out in the streets. This curse is not messing around. It spread and took out the entire population using the most efficient method possible, the internet. Much more efficient than having to step inside of a house in order to get cursed. They make it to the sea and find a small boat to escape on but they need the keys. Michi goes on a 30 second side quest for the keys and witnesses an airplane crash into a building in the process. They manage to escape and get rescued by a larger boat, bringing us back full circle to the film's opening scene. The boat's captain is played by legendary Japanese actor Koji Yakusho. He says that they are heading for Latin America because they are still receiving signals from that part of the world. Michi asks him if she did the right thing by getting onto the boat and continue on living. He warmly smiles at her and tells her that she did the right thing. It seems that most of the people people in the film succumbed to their loneliness which made it easier for the curse to consume them. This may also be the film's way of saying that people who spend their lives on the internet are lonely. She and Kawashima managed to stay positive and keep fighting. Unfortunately, this didn't help Kawashima from turning into a black stain. In the film's final scene, Michi watches Kawashima disappear in a strangely peaceful way. She says that she's now alone with her last friend in the whole world and has finally found happiness as the movie ends. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Pulse. My friends, this was a pretty unique Japanese horror film and definitely stands out from the rest of the genre. The storytelling is very cryptic and the film doesn't just feed you all the answers. It slowly reveals bits and pieces for the audience to figure out what's happening on their own. Even then, there's still a lot left open to interpretation because we never really get any concrete answers as to the events that unfolded. I wasn't the biggest fan of this film upon first watch, but it really grew on me when I watched it a second time. It's definitely a slow burn and not a film meant for mainstream horror movie audiences, but what Japanese horror film truly is. The film created a surreal and cryptic atmosphere that made me take a while to process what I was watching. Most of the scares in the film are built around the same concept. The scare scenes are pretty few and far between, but are very different than what I've seen before. They were so unique and unconventional that I didn't really know what I was looking at half the time, which is what made them so scary, earning Pulse a good scare score of 62%. The scariest scene in the film is definitely that scene. The way it's crafted and presented makes it so unnerving. Everything from the visuals, the insanely intense and creepy music, and right down to those sick dance moves made this a scare scene for the ages. But as always, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for tuning in and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.